Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to a quick view that isn't a quick view. It's the Redux. And remember, Redux. Like there are more, like we're reissuing a duck. Uh, we refuse here to use the Google pronunciation. Uh, go look it up if, if you if you feel so inclined. Today's Redux. Uh, Got to clean these off a little bit. Duratrax pivots, which are similar to the Louise mallet, but not quite the same. I honestly, uh, uh, searching the mental databanks, I'm trying to remember what the Louise pivot is, and it escapes me. Is it the Champ? Is the Class One Champ this? It might. It may well be. I don't know. These are Wiley's. Uh, Wiley is a Charisma uh, SCA-1E Coyote. These are his everyday Hotstorm wheels. Canyon Custom Class 1s. Uh, some, some, real, some real tankers. The Injora Inner from the Injora Red dual stage inserts. The non-silicones are old dual stage that had the silicone inner with the foam outer. But two wraps of fridge foam. Two wraps of anyone confused by fridge foam two wraps of this cut to the, the the correct width two wraps of that around the inner so they are fully customed out we do not bother to dismount this is a redux this this is a test to test this tire in pretty much its super optimal condition i just realized there's a there's probably at least five uh, beadlock screws falling off <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> oh my god. So every oh there's half a half a turn. That one was tight and that one was tight. Okay, so we we had two tight ones out of six. Uh this wheel doesn't look as bad. Uh, this wheel looks worse. Yep. 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 Check your uh Check your beadlock screws, everybody. Um, one. Yeah, just one loose one on that one. We've got the gent who it is now his job to perform these sorts of tasks. Lord Pentaby, the first of his name. His job is to test tires. His every days are non-XL, uh, old-timey uh, Proline flat irons. You can see. Now, the problem that he has on his day-to-days, if you haven't seen that episode, go go watch that episode, is that these have what I call Japanese milk breads, the Panther Cougar are the same way. Like, the foam, the memory foam is the most squishy, delicious, malleable. It provides virtually no sidewall support for him. So, when he gets into... Uh, anything remotely side hilly, those don't help him out. But as I m lamented in that installment, it doesn't matter because, oh, white on white, kind of nice. Uh, because he's going to spend very, very little time uh, on those. He's going to spend the share devoted to the lion of his time testing other tires. It's a test rig. Baseline is the same way. Baseline is on the same exact set of wheels, but he's on cut canyon trails, and he gets to run them about 5% of the time, if that. So we are going to have to start doing it. We're going to have to start doing it. Uh, so far, he just has a lowly Stealth XF sticker here on the side, but he's got a lot of plain white area around his body, and his, his brother is quite tattooed up. He bears a sticker of pretty much every product that he's ever tested. So this is the first up for, uh, and appropriately, uh, I had mentioned that he was a roared as the, 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 the front decal over here is metallic. And the, I don't, I don't know enough about, uh, fonts and typefaces to know what, what the middle part of an F is called. But uh, that broke off, uh, so he looked like a roared. And then I was looking at it, and I said, Heat Gun, come hither! And uh, we just flipped it over, because it is his name. He is now 
Lord Pentaby. He bears his title upon his grill, Lord Pentaby, the first of his name. Tester of all tires below 4.45 inches. That, you know what? It, it, lo it, it, it looks a little too stocky for me. I think, I think he still, I think he reps better. Oh my goodness, though. So, relative, like, these are, the hot storm wheel, those are also hot storms. But this hot storm wheel is reasonably heavy compared to a typical 1.9 beadlock. They are lighter than that. And then those silicone inners from Injora, oh, oh, we did find a use for those uh, insane cross RC foams that we tested a while back, which is they are so firm, uh, they make for a great scale pad. We have it set to ounces. Oh, 131. Uh, that is, I think we get to grams first. 3,725 grams uh, to the rest of us. That is 8.21 pounds. Is that or is that not, my friends, a an appropriate class one hard body weight? Oh, my God. He's a tanky boy, but um, a, a, a great portion of that tankiness that we just put on there is due to this, which I just realized, yes, we indeed have to take off because we didn't, we didn't do the thing. We, we cut this thing out for a reason. One, oh, six. That's, that's class one. It's one, oh, six. One, oh, six by... I would call it 39. You could probably do this and call it 40. You might call it 38. On this particular insert, and there is a little bit of shoulder bag, 39. 106 by 39. Pretty typical of a class one. And while we're at it, we've got this thing. Let me get that. Back. There we go. Now it even, it even sits flat. Scale. Scale. We're not, we're not, something is not level. There we go. Let's just do it in ounces. Eight and a half ounces. Eight and a half ounces. So, uh, for the set, that's 1734 ounces. Yeah. We are very near a kilo of wheelos in class one, which is something in a, of an achievement. So compared to his prequel voyage, where we were just checking things like suspension setup and whether or not he was ready to go to work. Uh, this is an, uh, this is a not insignificant amount of unsprung weight or a not insignificant increase in unsprung weight. Yeah, I, that, why are we back and forthing on the bench? Uh, because whenever you change to a different wheel with a different offset, you basically want to make sure that the wheel itself isn't bottoming out like you uh and ladies and gentlemen this is why we do this yeah good good okay bad so that wheel bottomed out on the hex and is now rubbing against the brake rotor so what would happen is if we took that out to test it uh we, we, would, we would have a bad day yes and here is why because on this particular wheel, it's a redux. We're allowed to do whatever we want. The socket depth is six millimeters. And this wheel hex depth is five and a half. Half a millimeter, everybody. Half a millimeter. I will dig through the bins. I will find at least a six millimeter hex to throw on there. And then uh, we will get to... The thing. Oh, I gotta find the board too. And a pen. You guys, you guys, you're supposed to remind me. Take the board, get a pen. Make sure your batteries are good. Only because I'm the one that remembered to check the wheels. You guys were just like, yeah, let's go do it. Guys, we gotta work together. We may be forced to pay a little bit less attention to things like self right today because the offset, these are fixed offset wheels. And the offset on this particular wheel, we're full tucked. 
So you would have no body interference at any point with this tire on this wheel, but at the same time, they're, they're in pretty narrow. We also have to take things into consideration like this. In a, in a, in a standard quick view, we try to be as quasi-scientific, as pseudo-scientific as possible, in which we try to minimize the variables. And we're trying to do that here as well. But we also have to take into account that in his current, uh, he's the baby brother, but he's the big boy baby brother. He weighs almost three pounds more than baseline. So a tire undergoing this testing is, it's doing more of the thing. Oh my goodness. Okay. I have a fresh in my mind recollection of the Flatiron XLs on their stock. How many year old? What was that 2011? 13 year old foams? Uh, this is, this is a different ball game. This is gluing yourself to the ground. So, as per usual, your results may vary. But if you've got a class one rig and you're running something like this, if you're getting up in that weight, uh, the Enjora inners with the fridge liner outers, oh man. Because of the, and I know some folk are pretty much enemies of rotating mass, but the stability brought about by this combo is ridiculous. Let's just take him straight up the, the, the hard side up here. Oh. Oh man. I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we're having problems, okay? Because I want to score this tire authentically. I want to be critical, but I want to be fair, and I want to be fair to the other tires. The Lord here is young in his tire testing career. Matter of fact, unless you count his experience on the non- XL flat irons, this is his first set of tested tires. These are phenomenal. But are they? Is it, is it, well, I mean, they kind of are. Here's, here's where I'm trying to get around to. You, you can just, you can hoon on these tires. You can lean into, and he's narrower, mind you, his track is narrower than on his standard set. You, the stability is so high that I'm surprised there is not more of a hit to the forward drive. Like right here, the reason we can't just pull over that until we find the right spot like that is because the, the sheer mass of the wheel tire insert setup, well over a kilo of wheels, wheelos. It's gluing us to the ground, gluing us to the ground to the point where sometimes we're taking a little bit away from the lug's ability to forward drive. So how do I score this, right? Forward drive wise, it's not astonishing. It's not blowing me away. Stability is not a, a thing that we track, right? We do position ability, we, uh, we do the ability to move laterally, we do self-writing, we do how do they respond to a bump, we do all of these little things. Forward drive, I would put somewhere like around a, like a 94. So I would wanna say it's like a 9.4 here at Slick Rock, but I don't think that that's an accurately reflective number. We'll just asterisk it. We're gonna call it a 9.4 with an asterisk because with this setup, the heavy wheel, the heavy insert, and the tire on an 8.2 pound rig. Forward drive is about a 9.4. I think the tire is actually higher than that. And this is reflected in moving over uneven ground as well. The conditions over in the piazza uh, over there is broken up and irregular by design. It's kind of a, how do we test open ground suspension action. 
we have a significantly heavier weight at each corner and it slows the suspension down. How could it not? I'm just, okay, we're stuck in on the slider right there. Oh. Oh my God. Now, where I would say 94 asterisk on the pure forward drive it, that right there was an almost constant throttle exercise. Okay, we've got ourselves stuck in a little bit and then we'll roll back. I think rolling back to wheels is gonna happen a lot. Maybe the self-riding will be great. The rolling back to wheels is definitely gonna be a common occurrence with how much weight. We've basically, the, the wheels, tires inserts are almost double the weight of the body. So we have really accounted for the weight of the body in that low weight. So how would the pivot do on a lighter vehicle? Well, oh my lord. Uh, yes, my lord. That's like a 97 on that. Because when we point it, we just shoot it. Rolling on a class one, we get these little hangups, right? When I get back, I got axle stuck right there for a second. We go right here. I won't alter throttle input. We just use static throttle input and we only adjust with steering. I mean, I'll, I'll call it, I'll call it a 97. I get it. We we're also learning as we go here. We've never hard body class one tested. This is all new and I don't want the scorings to be independent. I want them all to fall into the regular scoring. So in what is I expect a surprise to no one, side hilling is not exactly the foray, particularly steep side hilling, the foray of things with one pound bodies, one plus pound bodies. We're even getting some squidge on that driver rear, but with the pro lines, because those foams are so soft in there, we had already basically driven out of it. I watched that corner drop but there's so much weight. Will it collapse? There it goes. Woo! You can, you can catch it real easy. The gyroscopic effect on these is as sharp of a double-edged sword as you can pull from thy scabbard, which uh, sometimes it's gonna cut you and sometimes it's gonna allow you to do that because there's just so much low weight, so much low weight, as low as we can get it. Ooh, a little light in the nose right there. Now, okay, yeah. Ordinarily, we can't, we can't drive this deep. Is that sidewall gonna pull it over? Yeah, it is. So this is an instance where this is a redux. We're not going through the work of unmounting and remounting and swapping wheels and doing all of these things. These were, as I said on Wiley, the SCA 1E Coyote, and they are not optimized to him. Do you know who they are optimized to? This guy. Um, I put that side hill, I put that side hill score like a I want to say 94, but I also want to say 95. Again, all the grains of salt, get your whole shaker out because what we're evaluating here is not just standing alone, the Duratrex pivot. We're looking at the pivot on that Canyon hybrid insert on a fairly heavyweight wheel and they love it. So your results with the pivot in a lighter setup may well be different. But in this configuration, they, it, well, let's put it this way. It does not drive like it weighs 8.2 pounds. It drives like it weighs five pounds, which is super weird because I've just picked it up and put it on a scale and I know how much he weighs and he feels absolutely like, like he's tap dancing. He's so light on his feet and his feet his feet are so heavy. 
I still haven't written anything down yet, and at a certain point, I'm going to start forgetting numbers. Honestly, the more we go to it, the more comfortable I feel about that 94 drive. I could go to maybe a 95, 94, 95. This setup with the pivot is not explicitly optimized for pure forward drive. Now, he's 8.2 pounds, uh, 3.7 kilograms. So maybe there's no such thing as optimizing this tire for pure forward drive. But the maneuverability and the stability, yeah, at no point did that ever feel like it was gonna go over forward at all. Like it almost felt like we were stuck and I'd go, am I stuck? No, it's just holding it in place. And uh, if you want a testimonial to the capabilities of the Hobby Wing Fusion SE 1200, it's that we've just given, we have fed this rotating Mahayas with a capital M and uh, doesn't, doesn't even care. It's still an electronic anchor. Yeah, the more I hit these, the more I feel comfortable with a 94 forward drive. Now, on a lighter vehicle, I think almost certainly, all but certainly, you would be rewarded with additional forward drive on an open cell foam, like a single stage, or maybe something 3D, right? Let's say we're going lighter inside, but your vehicle is going to have to be much, much, much lighter. Uh, I think this might be a, would we go so far as to classify it as super optimal? This is a near optimized setup for a guy of this kind of high bulk. Uh, it really, oh, did, did you see that little pop? Just a little pop and the front just tried to lift because we're getting a little, we're, we're over driving from the rear. And then the front was like, no, I am too heavy. And just boom, right back down. Oh, and then look right here. Stability. I gotta write some things down. Oh, I have the pen. You didn't remind me, but I brought it anyway. Uh, we said 94 at Slick Rock, which is a 9.4. Uh, Daphne's line is a 9.7. We said the side hill, I'd give it a 9.5. Over here, I would give it a 9.5 as well. A little bit better than it did at Slick Rock. Uh, well, I mean, a lot of bit better. I could, no, you know what? Thumb it. I'm gonna go 9.6 on this. He just, there was no forward drive. He didn't pull that ledge, but my gracious, everything else he did was, well, the ground is Velcro, sticking to the ground. Like ordinarily we're gonna get some that. We can catch it. Ugh. There's something to be said. Rotating mass is not super optimized, but it is inexpensive and it does work. So, you know, more of the double-edged swords. It's our first opportunity coming up here to see what, what the side lug will do. They honestly, they, either I'm getting used to it, I'm getting used to it. I'm, I'm noticing more of the side lug ability here. And the drive, I feel like the drive is getting better and it shouldn't be. You're stuck in there. You've, you've not chosen wisely. You've chosen poorly. Oh, you've chosen very poorly. Almost managed to uh, rocket it up there. Oh, okay. Let's just pretend none of this part ever happened. All right, this is gonna be the first opportunity for us to see how the how the side lug works with that forward drive or if it improves that forward drive. This is, this is an obstacle that kind of belies its difficulty. It doesn't look that difficult, but the selection of where your line is, depending on what rig you're on in, uh, is, is fairly difficult because it's really cragged out Okay, we're, we're doing a belly slide position here. 
That's really wide out, but I don't think the tire could do anything to stop it. Nice, nice correction there. Because the sidewall deflection is pretty much just exactly what we need. Not, nothing extra. And because the inner part, that really heavy weight Enjora inner, it's not collapsing. This is where we're, oh, hold it, pull it, pull it. Get off of me, get off, hold it. Okay, there's a real, real narrow slot here. I'm gonna try going even more left here. I don't know if more left here is an option. I think, I think that, I think it's bumper is hooked, rear is hooked. So we're not getting the opportunity to pull that front end over. The stability though, oh. The maneuverability is there. Just try, I can't find, I can't find the spot. Yeah, that little ha 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 ha. That is a little bit less forward. I mean, we would all love maximum forward drive all the time, but forward drive is a compromise where you're giving to get, there are no free lunches. Try the real high approach, okay. We're gonna poke that off. Yeah, we'll, we'll get that. We'll get that back on. Yeah, he just needs that little bit of extra space to get through, but he will indeed run the line. You just have to. Oh, let's see the turn in here. Oop! That was bumpered in. Bumpered in. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. It's a little murder hole there. Stable, stable. I'm gonna reset here. Little bit of side slide there. I think that was weight. That was weight overwhelming uh, total available traction. But then the, the double edged sword swings back the other way. And that through there, we're having a counter steer because it's, he's like, no, I, how sharp do you wanna go through this? What, Choose your sharpness and we'll pull that. Oh. Oh. It's so good. It's so good. Um, and again, we may be looking at the whole, the whole thing. How does it do on a single stage? On this, I imagine terrible. Uh, we would drop the weight, but all of the weight that we'd be, we would be dropping would be unsprung. That would be bad. So over here, I'd go 9.7 again. Those little issues were finding the line. Once he got on the line, he's gone. So on his day-to-days, on his flat irons, this is very difficult for him right here. Get that mechanical to over. It is not, I mean, it is not as difficult here, uh, for sure. At least on the, the, the regular side of Daphne's line. We will come down here, try to get the bumpers through, that'd be nice. Okay, what we don't want to see is left hand flop. Left hand flop inbound, hmm. It wasn't a full flop, it was more of a Side slide, again, we're making trades here. The, the trade floor is open. We are definitely giving up some drive in exchange for a ridiculous amount of stability. Okay, that's just mechanical. Right there, right there, stay, 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 stay. <laughs> <laughs> he is, he is hyper stable. I, I, it's as weird as it might be to say, 
I feel like I would also almost be willing to sacrifice some of this stability in exchange for a little bit of forward drive. That's a center cut there, which is going to turn into the right-hander. <laughs> He's just, maybe not, maybe not. I potentially rescind. I love that stability. He's not going to do the other side because that is very much forward drive reliant. Oh, that drive looked great, though. There's no hesitation there. That's really, really good. Oh, man. That's the best his forward drive has looked. And it's on a breakover section. Bump. Oh. Because they're so flat, can we even get, can we bring any donkey? No. Look at it. This is full bump. I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the, the stop on the trigger. That's 100% throttle to go up that. Wow. In terms of bump, that combo is illegal. Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh I thought we were going to have issues. I thought we were going to have issues. Oh. N again, with 50% reverse and 50% reverse is our normal choice. If you had 75% reverse on this, or if you're one of those absolute madman lunatics that run 100% reverse, the, the normal flip maneuver, the self right whip would be so easy. You'd give it a tiny burst of throttle and you'd be back on your wheels. We have to try the other way. We do this way. Oh my gracious. Okay, I gotta write this down. I gotta write this down because that's a three in one and we gotta move on to the next station. Uh, Oblivion, I said it was a night function. Daphne's third. Daphne's third. We gotta split the scores because we can't do it right. Self right. Wow. Uh, bump. Wow. And again, for what is certainly not the last time. We are looking at a setup. They'll all be linked in the description, but uh, if, you, if you're equipping something else that is holding the tire and is filling the tire, your results are all but certainly going to be different. The pivot though is shining like a shiny diamond today. So betwixt the time we last filmed at this location and now, the, uh, the giant tree of heaven that shields both mavericks and teardrop and a little bit of sultans from the anger, the full anger of the sun is in full, is in full leaf. I am in full shade right now. And uh, if you fast forward a couple months, it will be absolutely delightful. Our stability dropping off of this should be rawr. That was a one wheel lander, didn't matter. The mallet was pretty good at this. And the pivot is, is no different. It, it's, it's one of those things. I don't remember any prior driving experience involving the pivot being this good. And I don't know why. Because I have it on some good authority from one of the platinum tier supporters of the Canyon Miata Commuter. The pivot, one of their favorite tires. And they run them on big heavy things like this, like Woody, who's in the shop right now, is running pivots. And you know what? I might have not have gotten it before, but I get it now. The pivots really do shine. I had said in the review of the mallet that I preferred the mallet to the pivot. And that is because the mallet is fitted to Ruby, who is an element trail runner who weighs about five and a half pounds. And the mallets are excellent on the green and Jorah molded silicone inserts. They are phenomenal. Honestly, they don't feel quite as all around good as these. These are remarkably good. 
And what this is telling me, above anything else, is that this, this is definitely a redux. And I think the score that we're going to get will be fairly accurately reflective of the ability of the tire. But it is certainly more reflective of the abilities of this insert setup inside this tire on a on a something tanky. Like if you're in the eight, nine pound range, these are going to sing you a song. And really, class one to me has meant chassis mounted steering, hard body, the little, the little bitty tires, and this. This is a tremendously rewarding experience to drive this. I have no idea what the, yep, doop. Oh, look at the self right off the grass. He earned every 10th of the self right score. They certainly respond to different inputs in throttle and they will pull forward. Even trying to roll it down that little slope there there's a confidence that it's going to land in the right spot. I came into this expecting ground clearance issues, uh, expecting not that much grab laterally. I expected to feel the weight of the rig and the weight of the combos, and I don't, except in very rare instances. There are some select moments where you go, yep, that is the tire being too heavy. But again, we get that flywheel effect, so the self-right is off the charts. Uh, surface transition, so this dirt up here at the top is still reasonably loose. We get right into here, and it just, it's academic. It just pulls right over. And the, the, I can't, I cannot hyper-emphasize the stability enough, which is the insert, sure but it is that relationship. We talk about a relationship between the insert and the tire. This insert and this tire were thrown together and were okay on a rig that was in that five to six pound range. I have unintentionally made something that is really quite good when your rig is like seven to eight pounds. So good. Oh. Uh, I'm impressed with myself here, and I'm in a, a little bit of a back pat for this. So during that transition, uh, camera two, the battery in camera two died. These were a little bit loaded up, a little bit wet. Not, I mean, you can see by the back of them up there. But we're gonna issue some small complaint against Canon cameras, and it's not unique to Canon cameras. It's unique to, a, well, it's not unique at all. It's coming to a lot of electronic devices, which is make a battery indicator that means something. So the battery indicator that's inside this, it's right up here, it's right there on the screen. Uh, it's three little segments inside a shape that looks like a battery, a big segment, a smaller segment, and a smaller segment still. That It will stay at full battery for an hour, and then it will drop to two bits of the battery and it will be on that for 10 minutes and then the last the third and final segment of the battery lasts 90 seconds and then the camera just goes dead so th there's really no point in that in that battery indicator is there what 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 are we actually indicating it's either full as soon as it gets to that it when the first segment goes out just put a new battery in it apparently and also, you know, I mean, it's not, it's equally my fault. I'm not using an actual video camera. These are mirrorless still cameras masquerading as video cameras. So the batteries are very small. Okay, that is a very slick, very wet rock. Oh, look at you. Look at you. I would legit. I would I wouldn't say there's a difference. I I'd call it exactly the, I call it exactly the same. So at the end of this day, we leave Lord Pentaby at a nice jaunty angle up there atop wet slick rock, and we we do the math and we do the tally, and if our mental arithmetic uh, is good, and I'm I'm feeling mostly awake right now, so I feel like the math was correct. 
Uh, we arrive at his aggregate score of 95.7. And I want to say that 95.7 is a number that has occurred more than once before. We're going to have a, there's going to be a multi-way tie at 95.7. And again, for the, this will indeed be the final time that we mention this. There is a, there is a caveat there. That 95.7 may not be truly indicative of your outcome. Unless you're running, like if you don't have a hard body, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, these tires seem, these are class one tires. And I don't mean that in just that they are 4.19, that they are 106 millimeters. I mean that these are class one tires. They are definitely designed to have weight on them because they weren't this good when I ran them the first time. They weren't this good on Wiley. They are very good on Lord Pentaby sitting there right now at an RTR weight of 8.2 pounds. So if you're on something lighter, mallets. Take Get the Injora uh, greens, slap them in there. Oh, that just occurred to me. Injora blues. Enjora Blues in these. I think that the performance of the Enjora Blue would be very close to this little hybridization that I've got going on in these. I think these will be a little bit better at side hilling because the way they'll fill out the tire. The silicone, the molded silicone inserts, are they kind of narrow in at the top and they give a little bit of weakness at the top shoulder of the tire. So I think you might be giving up a little bit of stability in, in exchange for forward drive, possibly. Go away, B. Uh, not, not you. Uh, but I think you could get some pretty good results. If someone out there is going to test the pivots on something lighter with, say, a Injora Green in silicone insert in it, let me know how that goes. Because my experience with these on lighter weight rigs has not been as good. They were really singing today. And yeah, again, your results may almost certainly vary unless you're, unless you're real, air quotes, real class one. Big, heavy, hard body. Uh, would a shorter wheelbase help or hurt? Mm, I don't know. I'll have the links to building up the stuff to make a set of inserts like this yourself should you be interested in it. The silicone would be a whole lot easier and probably a little bit cheaper. But, you know, when you're, when you're buying that last few percent of performance, that's the stuff you really have to pay for. A, uh, the included foam will get the job done. I mean, you'll be able to drive around on it. And then you want a little bit more performance and you want a little bit more performance. And congratulations, Power Creep be thy name. So take 95.7 and I'm good with that so long as the, 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 so long as the, uh, the spreadsheet master, the man who maintains the, the Canyon Tire Test Protocol spreadsheet uh, needs to put a little asterisk next to it saying something about super optimal inserts for the vehicle. Like... Or that Lord Pen we, maybe we need another column on there telling whether it was baseline or Yella or uh, the Lord himself, the Pentabe, the man of Pentabe, first of his name, who uh, tested the tire because results may vary here. I'm going to estimate that out there in the world, results may vary 100%. So uh, we got a little jaunty angle for a couple. Well, that way would be easy. So we're going to drive out of it the difficult way. But look, I'm alive. Okay, I feel the hook. I feel the hook. There we go. Whee! They are tremendously rewarding. And I'm, I'm all right with the 95.7. I'm okay. Because it is a Canyon Custom in there. It's just a little bit different. Than, than a regular, it's a class one Canyon custom. Oh, didn't I, did I do an episode about this? I might have done an episode about this. Thanks for watching this episode, everybody. We, uh, we hope that you come back real soon to see whatever we do next. This Redux took a minute longer. Uh, the goal of the Redux is to do these a little more briefly, but uh, we're just having a good time, having a good time. So 
I hope you had a good time. I hope you tune in again soon. I hope that between now and then, you won and all to your very best. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you again here from the canyon. Lord Pentaby, first of his name, is going to wheel us out. We're, we're doing a little stick the bumper in. Yeah. A good time was hopefully had by all. 95.7.